Hey guys, uh, Daryl Marston here, uh, former lead investigator of Ghost Hunters on A&E Network. Uh, guys, yeah, I just came out with my book, uh, The Horrors of the House of Wills, and I am super excited about it. It's actually getting released um, September 8th of this year, and uh, it's on pre-order and everything right now. But House, the House of Wills, it, to give you guys kind of a backstory, is a location in Cleveland, Ohio, that I actually investigated. Um, guys, I'll take some questions in a few minutes. Let me just get through this. Um, it's good to see you all. Thank you for saying hi. Um, yeah, so House of Wills is this, this crazy location in Cleveland, Ohio, that I investigated about seven, eight years ago now. And it's the only location that I actually say that um, in the over four or 500 locations I've been to in my, um, my career or whatever you want to call it, that actually almost made me quit doing the paranormal altogether. Uh, so what it was, uh, I went to this location and I wasn't prepared for it. I was only about seven, eight to 10 years into being an investigator and I was, uh, I was a little immature in my investigating skills at the time where not like where I'm at now. And, uh, what it was, this location is a very dark location and the way I, um, explain it to people when they ask me in all the shows I've done, I've, I've been. I've been on so many of his shows. I've been on Good Morning America and uh, people, I've been to People Magazine and Pop Culture Magazine asked about this, this actual location. And the way I explain it to people is it's the only location I've ever been to where that it actually doesn't feel like the location is haunted, but the location is an actual entity. Um, it is a living organism. And um, I don't know if, how they really explain that any differently to people. But when you go into this place, uh, the energy of it is, is tremendous. It's nothing like I've ever felt. It's, um, it's a darker energy. And I'm not one to throw around the D word, the demon word or anything like that. Uh, but there is a darker energy there. And a little bit of the backstory on the location, it was actually, um, it was actually built by a uh, 32nd degree Mason back in the late 1800s. And if anybody knows about uh, Mace, the Masons, how they, <clears throat> like especially the, um, the, the people who you do the actual building, you know, the engineers and the architects, they build things to harness energy. And this location was built for that. And just the design of it, and it's been added on to over the years, don't get me wrong. So when you go into it, it was, you know, it was built by this you know, 32nd degree Mason. It was, uh, after that, it was a German social club for many years. Uh, so you have that whole backstory. It was a hospital. It was uh, rumors of being a speakeasy. Uh, and uh, it was from 1945 on up to the early 2000s, it was Cleveland's largest uh, African-American funeral home. Uh, it was a gentleman named Mr. Wills is the actual, the, uh, the original owner. Uh, of the funeral home, and he passed away in 1971, and his kids took over the property and ran it after that, and it kind of got ran into disarray, and there was some uh, a lot of problems there all the way up to, like, the early 2000s when it finally got shut down, and some people actually, you know, went to prison over some things that happened there, but uh, it's all in the book. It's um, it's just one of those locations I can't explain. And then it sat it sat vacant for several years until a gentleman named Eric Freeman bought the property. And um, this is all public knowledge, by the way. What I'm going to tell you about Eric: Eric is one of the high priests of the New Satanic Church. He bought the property. Um, there has been rituals done in the building. Um, I had to get all his you know permission to tell all this, so it's not like I'm telling anything that people don't know. He's very open to that. He. Uh, uh, if you know anything about Anton LaVey, who is like one of the original um, creators of the, the Church of Satan out in California, uh, he partnered, partnered up with um, with Anton LaVey's grandson, Zach LaVey. And this is the property that they, they were running for a while. And um, Eric is still there running the property. I'm not sure about Zach, but uh, it's a very dark location. Um and it really was the only location that where something actually followed me home. It played havoc on my my life and my family's life for several months until I was able to get rid of it. So that's what this location is. It's like I said, out of the four or five hundred places I've actually investigated, you know, being on TV and off of TV, 
Um, it's the one that actually followed me home. It messed with me really bad for a long time. And where I finally had to set down after talking about this, this location for so many years, people kept asking me to write a book about it. And finally during COVID, I sat down, I had time and I started writing. And when I started writing this book, it was like therapy for me to get it all out because I had been holding it in for, you know, six or seven years at that point. So uh, it's all out. It'll be coming out September 8th. I'm super excited about it. And I can't wait for you guys to read it. And uh, guys, um, it's going to be a good book. And I can't wait for you guys to see what this location is about. And hopefully someday you'll go visit there. Uh, but now I'm going to start taking some uh, some questions. I know there's a bunch here to chat. I'm sorry. And I'll start here. Uh, Tammy, oh, no. Yeah, another book I'll have to get. Thank you. I hope you do get it. Uh, so, guys, you know, ask whatever questions you want. I'm very open. Uh, someone said they lost the uh, video. Uh, yeah, I'm very open to everything. Let's see, Ro, I used to dream about ghosts a lot when I was a kid. My mom remembers sleeping with a blanket on my head. Ghosts went. Yeah, I heard that before. Uh, very cool. Um, but like I said, yeah, the House of Wills is just one of those locations. Uh, I don't recommend it for the 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 person who's just investigating. I really don't recommend it for anybody, to be honest with you, uh, especially if you go in there uh, and you're not ready for this. What, hey, Marcia, see, what's the energy like in the deep ocean? Uh, couldn't ask you that one. Couldn't, I mean, I couldn't answer that one. I, you can uh, you can contact them if you're in the Cleveland area and if uh, there, someone is there, they will let you visit the property. Yes, Peggy. How did I get started um, <clears throat> in paranormal investigating? I actually got started by complete accident. I, I was not a you know paranormal buff or anything like that. I actually got invited in 2005 to a, um, a Halloween event. It was right around Halloween at a place called Fort Delaware in the state I live in, Delaware. And anybody knows Fort Delaware, Fort Delaware is was a prison um, was a, a, a military prison during the Civil War for the Confederate soldiers. It was actually dubbed the Andersonville of the North. Uh, and anybody knows about Andersonville, Andersonville was a very bad, bad place for Northern prisoners to go to. Uh, I went there and didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what a ghost hunter was or a paranormal investigator at the time. I, you know, I just thought all that was crazy. And I had my first experience where I actually witnessed an apparition the first time out. And uh, I, all I knew when I left there that night, I was only there for about three hours, maybe four hours. And I knew when I left there that night that um, somehow, some way, I wanted to recreate what I saw that night. What I saw was this, a man. I only see him from the shoulders up, his head and his, his shoulders. Um, he had uh, shoulder length hair, uh, a very scraggly, dirty beard. It looked like he had debris in it, like, you know, dirt and and leaves and stuff and he was only there for about maybe eight to ten seconds and he just disappeared and that got me started into the paranormal what is the most compelling evidence you ever captured uh amy uh most compelling evidence i ever captured was when i uh investigated for the show ghost hunters in alaska uh we were at a place called the Halsingland hotel in um in alaska and uh what happened was I was on the third floor of the Halls and Hotel with uh, Mustafa, the gentleman, the other gentleman I was with on the show, and I had what, a body cam on, like the police wear, and I had totally forgotten I had it on, and I heard something run down the hallway at me. I couldn't see it with my own eyes, but I actually captured a full body apparition twice on my camera standing right in front of me. The first time about two feet, and a, a minute or two later, he's about three to four feet away from me, just standing there. All my body cam, you, go, you can go watch it on uh, our Alaskan episode. What do you think ghosts and spirits are, Anna? Um, I, I think uh, you know, entities or ghosts, whatever you want to call them, are just energy. Uh, we're all made up of energy, and that energy you know, cannot be you know, created or destroyed. So when it, we die, this vessel, we're, you know, we, our body that energy has to go somewhere. And I always tell people, if you're good in life, you're most likely going to be good in the afterlife and vice versa. If you're bad, you're going to be bad in the afterlife. So that's probably what you're getting, you know, when you get these, you know, good spirits and these bad spirits are, you know, they're, they're just, they're just human energy. 
that's left over. Do you in interact having practice involving spirits outside of the investigation? No, I do not. I am not a, you know, I am not a psychic or, you know, uh, intuitive in any way. Peggy, what do you protect yourself? With? I protect my, I protect myself with, I, I am a, um, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and Savior, Yeshua. Uh, that's how I protect myself. I don't go in there. I don't taunt. I go in there as a complete observer. Matter of fact, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to an investigation up in Pennsylvania. What is your favorite device to use? I, I like using the EDI Plus, um, which is a, if you're not familiar with it, it's an all-in-one tool. And I kind of explain to people as like a carpenter with his hammer. A carpenter always has his hammer. The EDI for a paranormal investigator is your hammer. Uh, it does everything. It, it, it uh, measures humidity, pressure, uh, EMF, uh, temperature, increase and decrease. Uh, it has a geophone on which actually uh, measures vibration and you can use them all at once and you can actually has a memory card that goes in the top of it that you can actually record everything that's going on to correlate what you're experiencing at the time, take it off, throw it on the laptop or your computer and actually you know, view what you're actually capturing. How did you learn all of your skills? Oh, Peggy, uh, that just took years of, you know, just doing this, um, experiencing it going to locations like I said I've been to over 400 locations throughout the you know the country and the world and um you you just sometimes you know you, you I learn I learn every time I, I don't care I've been doing this for almost 20 years I I'm still learning and um and that's how I've learned and there's people who know more than me and there's people who know less than me and I, I try to teach people and I learn from people as well so I'm just comp always learning the uh that's awesome thank you yeah you're welcome Tiffany no problem your question, how did you get rid of whatever? Oh, um, it followed me home. I actually start reaching out to people in the community that I, you know, I, I you know, I had at the time and uh some people helped me with some stuff, people who you know knew how to get rid of things like that. And I, I honestly, I mean, it might sound, you know, corny, but I started praying. I found God really quick. When you have something in your house that you can't see but you can hear and you can feel it and it's messing with you and your family. And I never had anything like that, that happen before. You, you find God real quick. What sort of things did the entity do after it followed you? Home? Oh, wow. Um, I got, I went into a deep depression and I'm not a and people, anybody who knows me, I'm not a depressed person at all. I, I mean, I, the worst things in the world could be happening right in front of me. And I fi always find a silver lining in it. Um, but I went into a deep depression. I was very, I, I started getting sick. Um, I've seen, I saw things in the house. Um, my family started seeing th things in the house. And uh, yeah, so I, I just figured, yeah, I better get help. You're, weather, you're welcome, Heather. And Callie, yes, you're welcome. Yeah, so yeah, that's, I mean, I, I definitely believe in prayer. I believe, you know, that, you know, it, you, you know, believe in, you know, uh, praying to Jesus. And that helped me a lot get through what I went through. And I wasn't like a, an, a, a holy person or religious person in any way before that. Yeah, I still, I mean, I'm still not like a church going person or anything like that. I, 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 I worship uh, in my own way. But yeah, the uh, tips for people new in the paranormal investigating or wanting to get started oh uh, yeah tips uh, i always get asked that question um if you're new at this and you've never investigated but you're trying to get into it i always suggest uh trying to do it on your own uh not really i mean nothing against joining groups and teams but everybody does it differently and it, it seems to me sometimes i did it on my own i never belonged to a team i started my own team in 2011 but I never belonged to another team or anything like that besides when I was on TV, of course, with ghost hunters. But uh, it, I, I think going in on your own and not taking a lot of equipment, don't, don't buy everything you see on the shows. Uh, if you were going to take anything to an investigation, you know, a good video camera, a good audio recorder. And like I said, maybe an EDI plus, um, and that's all you really need. You don't need, you know, I see people walking into investigations with, you know, a whole van load of equipment and it takes them two, three, four hours to set it all up. 
to investigate for another three or four hours and you're tired by then and then you've got to pack it all up and go home and you really haven't gotten the full experience it's always best to go in walk the, the actual property or the location feel it out and uh use as less equipment as humanly possible just something to, to record your experiences uh let's see amy do you have a procedure you go through before entering a location not really amy um that's what i was saying i mean I go in, like these days, especially, um, especially in the last five or six years, uh, I go in as a complete observer. Um, I don't, you know, say any kind of weird, like any strange prayers or anything like that. I don't have a, a certain piece of jewelry I wear. You know, some people wear, you know, it's whatever your belief system is, whatever makes you feel better. I do tell people, though, when they're going on these investigations, I don't care where it is, especially some of these darker ones. Don't ever bring baggage with you. And what I mean by baggage, I mean, if you're going into a location and you're having financial problems, you're having marital problems, any kind of problems, if there's something darker there, it will latch onto that and it will use it against you. Um, so that's what you got to watch out for these, these darker locations, definitely. Who contacted you? How did you, do you decide it's worth visiting? Uh, well, these days, I mean, Especially after, you know, TV and being on TV and everything, I really don't get contacted. Like, I do get contacted. Don't get me wrong. I get contacted by the, the sometimes the homeowner, but I don't do those kind of cases anymore. Mine are mostly appearance events and um, and uh, just regular events where I go to where, you know, a company will have me come out, do an investigation with the public uh, and sign autographs and things of that nature. So that's what I kind of do now. I keep very busy with that. Matter of fact, like I said, as soon as I'm off here, I'm jumping in my car, excuse me, and I'm uh, I'm heading up to Pennsylvania to do an investigation tonight for, uh, for a company. Uh, any historical dream locations you'd like to investigate? Oh, wow. Uh, ooh, that's a good one. Um, I would love to get over to like, like different parts of Europe. I'll be over there in September, but I'm only going to be there for about a week. I have, you know, a couple, you know, paracons and stuff I have to do over there. But um, go over there, do some castles and things of that nature. I'd love to do uh, go to like Romania and Transylvania and do like a uh, Dracula's castle, the real Dracula's castle, uh, Vlad Tepish. That would be like top bucket list for me. Absolutely. And Tombstone. I've been to Tombstone. I did not get to investigate there, though. I was traveling through there to investigate in a place in Arizona for the uh, the show, so I didn't really have a whole lot of time there. But Tombstone, Arizona, would be also a, a very cool place to investigate as a, you know, for an actual investigation. It's a great, great question, by the way. Have you found certain types of locations tend to have more activity or are more often haunted than others. Ooh, yeah, um, like your hospitals, your um, your sanitariums, um, prisons, things of that nature that are, you know, you can investigate like um, West Virginia uh, State Penitentiary, which is Moundsville, Eastern States Penitentiary in Philadelphia, which is not far from me, Penhurst, uh, these kind of locations, they, they have a, there's, don't get me wrong, there, it's not all dark history and, and things that happen there, there is good as well, but it's such a it's it's these different layers and it really makes for a great investigation. It does. You always get some kind of activity like, you know, uh, Fort Delaware, Delaware, like I was saying, where I had my first experience. I've been there maybe eight to ten times investigating and I've never walked away from there, you know, without getting something. Do you. OK. I'm trying. I'm sorry. I'm trying to catch up here on. Let's see, did you find that also certain times of the day? No, not really. You can, I've gotten just as great um, evidence at two or three o'clock in the afternoon than I do at two or three o'clock in the morning. It doesn't really matter. I, people always may ask me, why do you do the TV shows at night? Well, it's more for the ambiance of it. Um, and plus, with your thermal cameras and your IR cameras, they only work in the dark. So it helps. Let's see. Have you ever done investigations in an ancient, very old cemetery and found souls who are still wandering? I have done investigations in cemeteries. I, I'm not big on it. Uh, I feel it's disrespectful. I had to do one for the show in Arizona one time, and it I, I really didn't want it to go to air because I, I wasn't comfortable with it. I've done them before. 
Uh, I've never found, yeah, anything in a cemetery, um, unfortunately, and I guess fortunately too, because I mean, I wouldn't want to hang around cemetery after I died. In the park in New York City, sorry, I lost that one. Have you ever investigated a location that had a natural disaster or, or that? Yes, I have. Um, once again, going back to Arizona, uh, I investigated a location there that had flooded three times. And every time it flooded, uh, there had been multiple deaths over since the 1800s on up. It was a silver mine all the way up to the 1980s. And um, got a really a lot of crazy things that happened there, especially outside, which, you know, a lot, it's hard to investigate outside because of all of the uh, noise pollution and everything, but um, call some really cool stuff that I can't explain. Have you ever investigated a location that had a natural, oh, that's the one I just read. You're welcome, Rosemary. Uh, see, have you found that what different people in your group, different vibes? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, that's an investigation you go on. Everybody has different vibes. Some people, you know, claim to be psychics or intuitives and they pick up on, you know, I'm not, I do have feelings sometimes, like I can feel, you know, when something's off, uh, that's, you know, that's just me. But yeah, it's always different vibes when you go in these locations. And so some of the, these vibes will actually set stuff off. Uh, that's what I've noticed. State prison in Pittsburgh building is for sale. Maybe we should paranormal store there, whoever buys it. I suggest boardwalk in the prison. Okay, very cool. What are your thoughts on the team investigations? Do you think they're an advantage? I I like them and I don't like them, team investigations, because it's hard. But sometimes because there's people who like to talk too much and it kind of ruins it for some people. And then sometimes you go in, you have these teams that are just amazing and they don't talk at all and they're very professional. Uh, I'm one of the guys I like. If you watch me on Ghost Hunters a, lot, a couple of times, I, 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 I went off by myself. And I like to investigate by myself. I put a GoPro or a body cam on, and I just went and did my own thing. I just felt like it 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 looked better, it felt better, and I got better, you know, good, really good evidence from it. Uh, what is one of your favorite memories? Ooh, favorite memories um, on TV would be uh, probably you know my probably um, Galena, Illinois. Uh, the Galena Marina Hospital is one of them where we actually caught a, um, I, I can't explain what it was. It honestly looked like in some video, you can watch it on the show where something came through this, looked like it shot down from the ceiling and, um, it almost looked like it was an angel. Uh, it was the whole room lit up. There was no electricity in the building, which was odd. And, uh, it was very crazy to watch especially when we saw it with our own eyes and we went back and watched it on video it was pretty insane to see this i don't know i can't explain what it was i really don't it was it was insane uh see investigating usual scary or is it ever like <clears throat> yeah it's both to be honest with you uh i find it there's times like i don't get really get scared i might have jump scares where you know it's usually humans that jump scare me i'll walk around like there was always it was always a joke on set while we were filming i always the uh, audio girl uh because the audio people would hide like in bathrooms and closets and stuff so you couldn't see them and every time i would come around a corner it didn't matter when it was or what episode it was she would get me and she didn't mean to she just happened to be there and i'm somebody i'm looking at you know, in bathrooms, I'm looking in closets for stuff, and uh, she'd get me every damn time. Uh, but um, yeah, it's 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 really cool when you do have a paranormal experience and it catches you off guard, like something gets knocked over, or or you see something, or you hear something, you know, audible voice in the moment, and it's not just you that hears it; other people hear it or see it as well. Yeah, that's the stuff that always gets me, Mel. Let's see, uh, what is the most surprising thing you discovered? Ooh, surprising thing we discovered. Um, I, I, would, I would go back to the book, um, The House of Wills, you know, The Horrors of the House of Wills, uh, the book that's coming out. I think one of the most surprising things I discovered, when I went there, I was not, I had no inkling or I had no uh, 
no way of knowing that Eric was, you know, this high priest. And I didn't even know who Eric was, Eric Freeman was at the time. And I didn't find all that out until after I had left there. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on in my life right at the point. Why did this thing follow me after having all these crazy experiences in the building? And then I started doing my research after I started feeling better and, um, and finding out all these you know, this crazy stuff about the House of Wills. Uh, I think that's probably, in, off the top of my head, it's probably the most, discover, most crazy discovery I've had in investigating. That is actually what I was going to ask next. Found yourself investigating, shocked. Uh, yeah. I, uh, it, yeah. Um, I, I'm guessing I'm, t- I'm reading that right. You, have I ever gotten shocked during an investigation? Like, you know, scared? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, ha- it's happened. Definitely. I can't say it hasn't. Um, not usually by paranormal, though. It's usually, you know, a human that just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time that scares you. But yeah, the, uh, let's see. Herman, it, okay. Aside from all the whom, when NZ follows you, have you ever slept in a, somewhere? Yes, I have. Um, in if you watch our episode from uh the castle in ohio when we were there uh you i actually stayed in cabin 13 for almost a week which is very crazily active and i've stayed in other locations that were haunted but that was the one i literally could not sleep in the after the third day i started sleeping in the back of my suv it was so active i could not sleep it was insane um, and you, a lot of that they cut out of the episode, uh, unfortunately. How do you determine it's worth a visit? How do, um, it's hard uh, to be honest with you, Peggy. Uh, to determine some place, you, you hear the rumors, uh, and and the problem is, you know, with the rumors you hear, and yeah, you know, sometimes you'll see them on TV. These different locations. Every time I visit one of the places I've seen on TV, like when I you know off of TV, sometimes you get disappointed because you, you don't get the same things. Um, and that's not saying it's not haunted or anything, but uh, sometimes you have to spend a few days there and, and a few investigations to actually capture stuff. You know, yeah. And so it's, it's. do you get permission? Oh, yeah, I always get, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the bomb. That was, yeah, I always get permission to enter a property. I will, I'm, I'm not a YouTuber. I don't do that, no. I say, do you think it's investigating the House of Wills as your first investigation? Do you think you would have continued investigating? No. No, honestly, I, I would not have. I, I think I would have. I would have walked away from it at that point. How do you feel? Do you ever get concerned for your family? Oh yeah, yeah. Not these days. I don't. Um, they're very in tune with things as well. Uh, I don't. Like I said, I don't bring stuff back with me. Uh, I. It's just the way I investigate. I investigate totally differently now. Uh, it's so I go into a location um, with the public. I do a lot of these public investigations with you. Know, with you know, companies that pay me to go there, and uh, I go there as a plea observer. I'm there as a teacher, basically, and to you know to kind of hang out. So I, I'm not in there digging in and, and taunting or anything like that. Not that I did that before, but have you ever encountered animal spirits? I could say yeah and no to that. Um, I think I have. I think I've you know encountered dog and and cat spirits. You ever likely have explored there? Imagine if someone would, but do you think the Titanic wreckage could be haunted? Yeah, absolutely. It could be. A lot of people lost their lives there. And right now, I mean, that's all you see all over social media is the whole the TikTok and things like that is, is the Titanic because of the, the submarine that went down there a couple of days ago. It's a very unfortunate and very sad. Um, but yeah, I do believe it's, you know, it's, it's probably haunted. My daughter is living in a 200 year old house building in Portland, Oregon. We had a spirit living in the apartment. We wanted to help moving, stay, and would find was a young woman in gently energy. Other building needed to leave. Wow, that's very crazy. What about spirits of places, forests, or other? Oh, yeah. Um, I've encountered what I, what, well, not what I call, but what people call or consider elementals outside, you know, like the elemental. And I, I don't know if they're they're real or not. I I can't explain them. But uh, elemental it basically is a spirit that's been around for thousands of years. It's never been human. It's not human. It could be animal. It could be you know just a our found spirit. Uh, yeah, I've encountered stuff like that. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Daryl. Enjoy your presentation. Thank you. Uh, this has been wonderful, Daryl. Maybe time for the last one. Yeah, give me one more question, guys. How does your family feel about you doing this, especially since since 
My family's great. They've always been very supportive. Uh, it's become my job, my hobby. My, I, I can't complain. My hobby became a full-time job for me. So they're very, they're very uh, supportive of me. Answer any questions? Thank you guys, and I can't wait to see you know, what you know, your responses about the book are.